I'm Dr. Shalini and today I'll be presenting a case on acute upper GI bleed. So this patient had come to us uh, with an uh, episode of upper GI bleed. Uh, airway breathing uh, was uh, first assessed and was found to be normal and on circulation his BP was found to be 100 by 80 okay. millimeters. So what should we do? So I would like to start IV fluids first. So we sir. want to start IV fluids. You put two IV lines. Remember you have to put always two IV lines not one. When the patient is having uh, hemodynamic compromise we have to put two IV lines. We are putting a large bore IV lines on both the hands and we are starting normal saline. Normal saline is the best uh, fluid which can be given in emergency room. Ringer lactate also can be given. So, he has put two IV lines. We are starting normal saline now. Okay. okay. So, should we make the BP very high? No, sir. No. Why you want? don't want to keep the BP very high? Sir, otherwise they will go into dilutional So, dilutional coagulopathy is a complication of high amount of fluids. We don't want to make the patient to have a very high BP that will create more problem, bleeding may increase. Mm -hmm. So we are giving IV fluids to just maintain the BP around 11080. Mm -hmm. And uh, if more fluid is required, what do you do? Uh, Suppose you want BP is not maintaining, so what else we can, we can uh, transfuse blood. So with the better blood. transfuse blood and uh, plasma, plasma, FFP and blood can be given rather giving this IV fluid mm -hmm. in this type of condition. So don't do don't over correct the fluid sure. status with the normal saline. Okay. okay, you can continue now. Uh, so, this is a 50 year old male patient who is coming from Trishur and presented with two episodes of passing black stool since one day. Patient was apparently asymptomatic five years ago when he had a similar Black episode. stools can, ha can be there in many conditions. What yes. are the conditions? Uh, so, first, uh, physiologically, we have to ask them if they are taking iron, iron medication. Iron tablet is the most common condition. Then Or any dark colored food. Okay. Uh, then it could be due Then upper GI upper bleed. GI these, bleed. Are, these are two important things. There are a lot of conditions, but most important condition is, one is whether the patient is on iron tablet, second mm -hmm. is patient is having any upper GI bleed. Yes, Lower GI bleed, mostly it will be Frank, fresh blood. Fresh blood. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, here, you sh your patient is not taking any iron tablet, he is mm -hmm. having Tari told yes. stools. Okay. So, a uh, uh, patient was apparently asymptomatic five years ago when he had a similar episode of passing black stools for which he was taken to a nearby hospital and was diagnosed with uh, chronic liver disease with portal okay. hypertension okay. Uh, and bleeding varices, uh, which was contributing towards the black starry stools for which he was advised to undergo glue injection to stop the bleeding. Okay. Uh, following which he was brought to Amrita to take a second opinion. Patient has had multiple episodes in the past uh, and now he, ha uh, he has come with uh, two episodes of black stools which was passed and was associated with a burning type of stomach pain. Uh, the stool was black tarry in color uh, with offensive smell and the patient found it difficult to flush the stools away. Uh, stomach pain was also sudden and onset burning type of pain with no aggravating or relieving factors and patient was referred to AIMS for okay. treatment. Okay. Uh, no history of any hematemesis, loose stools, fever, vomiting, constipation. Past history, patient is, an, uh, is also a known case of uh, systemic hypertension and is on medication since 4 years. Okay. Personal history, uh, he is on You should know type. the hypertensive medication because beta blockers are the commonly used drug for hypertension. Mm. What is the problem of beta blocker? It produces bradycardia. Oh. Somebody is having bleeding and uh, the first earliest sign of hemodynamic compromise is tachycardia. Mm. So most of the doctors depend on the tachycardia and tell that this patient is going for uh, hypotension. Okay, that is the earliest sign. Okay. But when the patient is on beta blocker, you will not see that sign. Mm. You should anticipate problems in this type of patients where the pulse rate is reduced because of beta blocker. It can mask the earliest sign of hypovolemia. Okay. Uh, personal history, he, he's on a mixed diet. He's uh, complaining of reduced appetite. Uh, sleep is normal. Uh, normal bowel and bladder habits. Uh, patient is habituated to alcohol. He has three pecs per day for the past 10 years and he's not habituated to smoking. Family history, there's no history of liver disease in the family. Uh, on examination, patient was conscious oriented to time, place and person. Uh, pallor was present and a mild ectric tinge was seen in the sclera. No cyanosis, clubbing, lymphadenopathy, edema. On examining the vitals, pulse was 82 per minute, normal rate, rhythm, volume, character and no radioradial, radiofemoral delay. Uh, the blood pressure was 100 bar 80 millimeters of mercury which was measured in the right arm in sitting position with an adult sized cuff. 
respiratory rate was found to be normal and uh, saturation was 97% on room air and the patient was found to be afractile. On head to foot examination, there was no signs of any decompensated liver disease. There was no parotidomegaly, no feta hepaticus, no uh, asterixis, spider nevi, pruritus, no disten abdominal distension, no caput medusae, uh, no palmar erythema, nail changes. So this patient is having chronic liver involvement, but yes. there is liver failure is not there. Yes, yes, but he has got portal hypertension mm -hmm. with GI blade. That yes. is this patient's condition. Yes. Okay. Uh, then on physical examination, the patient was examined in supine position and was adequately exposed with uh, hips and knee flexed after taking consent. Uh, the abdomen was scaphoid. There was no bulging uh, of the flanks were seen. All the quadrants were moving symmetrically with respiration. No, there were no dilated veins, scars or striae. Uh, on palpation, there was no local rise of temperature or tenderness, no other masses were palpable, there was no hepatomegaly, splenomegaly and no other, no pulsations were felt. Um, on percussion, there was no shifting dullness, no fluid thrill. On auscultation, bowel sounds were heard, there were no vascular hums or bruises. Uh, per rectal examination was not done and uh, other system examinations were found to be within okay. normal. So, how do you manage this patient? We have started on IV fluid. We, have, we can even start blood transfusion, FFP. That is the circulation part. But yes. this GI bleed part, how do you uh, how do you manage? Uh, so first, we'll have to start uh, pantoprazole. Patient okay. have to start. So you have to keep the patient in proper position proper like position. this. You have, we have already put two IV lines. One mm -hmm. IV line we are giving fluids and required blood also will be given. Mm -hmm. You want to start pantoprazole. Yes. Sir. How much pantoprazole should 40 be given? Forty milligram. So IV. please start pantoprazole. So, you are told 40 milligram. 40 I milligram did. routinely given for your gastric problems. But mm -hmm. we, here we have to give slightly higher dose. Okay. 80 milligram will give. So, okay. pandaprasol will be given 80 milligram. Okay. What is the action of pandaprasol? So, it, uh, it prevents the, uh, it reduces the acidic levels. Mm. Actually, the uh, because of the higher acidic levels in the stomach, mm. there can be blood clots which are formed because of this bleed and that acid can uh, dilute. dilute. That uh, break down that uh, clot. Yeah, okay, so, clot. clot will be destroyed because of higher acid levels. So, he has already given 80 milligram pandoprasol. Sometimes, some book says you can give even as infusion also. Okay. But uh, normally, in an emergency room, we give 80 milligram statin. Repeat dose can be required. If required, we can give. So, 80 milligram is given. That prevent the clot dilution. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, that is given. If it is an ulcer bleed, it prevents the, uh, it can be given for ulcer protection. Okay. okay. So, that is given. Then, then we, I would like to give uh, octreotide. So, we want to give octreotide. What is the action of octreotide? Uh, How do it, uh, what is the dose you give? 100 microgram okay. IV start and okay. then 50 microgram will continue. Okay. Already. This is mainly useful in portal hypertension induced bleed, not mm -hmm. in ulcer bleed. Ulcer, ulcer bleed, it may not be very helpful, but portal hypertension, since mm -hmm. this patient is having portal hypertension, to reduce that pressure, we are giving octreotide. So, you can see the octreotide, take. Mm -hmm. So, octreotide is a drug which is used to reduce the portal pressure acutely. So, that can be given, he has already, can you give octreotide? So, he has given octreotide. Mm -hmm. So, he, we, we have given two important drugs, one is pandaprazol and another one is octreotide. octreotide. What else? Somatostatic. Okay, that is if uh, uh, creotide or, so, or somatostatic. Okay. And then vasopressin also needs to be Okay. Given. Vasopressin can be given as? Uh, 0 0.1 to 0 0.4 units okay. per. So all drugs has got similar action. It mm -hmm. reduces the portal pressure. Since we have octreotide here, we are okay. given octreotide. Okay. okay. And then we'll have to use, uh, we'll have to apply pressure to stop the bleeding. How do you, uh, we cannot apply any pressure in the emergency room. So, we, we, what else, what we can do is, we have already given these two drugs. Can we put a, a RILC for this patient? Uh, so, if there is any procedure that we are planning, for example, in this patient, we might need to do an OGD scope. Okay. So, then we wouldn't need, we wouldn't okay. be putting an RILC. Normally, if there is an endoscopy uh, planning in emergency room or in uh, GA uh, area, mm -hmm. we may not put a RILC here because that can, that it's, itself can produce further damage okay. to the varices, it can produce uh, further bleed. Mm. Okay. So, we may not put that. Mm. Suppose it is an ulcer bleed and if the patient is having uh, hepatic encephalopathy mm. and we are not planning for an endoscopy, carefully we can put a rile tube and aspirate all the blood from the stomach. Otherwise, what will happen? If we do not remove the blood from the stomach, what will happen? Um. It can produce further worsening of hepatic encephalopathy. It is a oh. protein. Blood is a protein. Okay. If you keep it inside stomach, it will produce the growth of the ammonia producing bacteria. 
so better to put a rail sieve and aspirate okay. it. But whereas in this patient, we know that it's a variceal bleeding, we can do an endoscopy, so we don't try to produce further damage to the varices, we will not put a rail sieve at all in this patient. Mm. Okay, so this patient will be taken for endoscopy. Mm. Why you want to do an endoscopy? Uh, so we can see if the site of bleeding uh, okay. from of the varices okay. and then further if you want to stop the bleeding uh, the endoscopic ligature, ligature can, can be, be given there. okay so suppose this patient is having continuous bleeding his hemoglobin is very low mm. what you can do very low hemoglobin will not try an endoscopy immediately we try to transfuse the patient with mm. blood mm. or arrange the blood mm. okay and try to keep the hemoglobin little above 8 or 9 then you can take the patient for endoscopy. Suppose the hemoglobin is only 4, then this patient may not survive uh, if, uh, till the endoscopy. So, you have to transfuse the patient. While transfusing, you can take the patient for endoscopy. So, transfusion is required as an emergency transfusion here because patient is continuously bleeding. Mm. But remember, transfusion should not overcorrect the anemia. Mm. You should not give more blood and make the uh, vessels full. Mm. That will further bleed the abdomen. Mm. Okay. After ligation, what else you can do? Uh, after what all things you continue? So, this patient we are given pandaprasol. We have started IV fluids mm. and if required blood can be given. Then we are given IV pandaprasol 80 milligram. Octreotide is given or somatostatin that is given. Mm. Then this patient, we didn't put any rail shoe. We have sent this patient for endoscopy. Mm. They ligated it. Gastroenterologist ligated it. Mm. How do we prevent further bleeding? Um, so, we'll have to ask the patient to um, abstain from the alcohol. alcohol. We don't, he should not take any alcohol, alcohol. then. Um, then repeated uh, blood checkups, LFT value. No, should drugs we'll discuss. Oh, okay, drugs. Um, no alcohol, then pandaprasol should be continued? Mm. Uh, yes, sir. Like if it is a very cell bleeding, Pandaprasol will not have any role, but even then we will continue okay. Pandaprasol. But if it is an ulcer bleed, Pandaprasol has got a definite role. Mm. It will reduce the acid levels in the stomach. So, Pandaprasol can be continued 40 milligram daily. How do you reduce the portal pressure? With what drug you reduce the portal pressure? We cannot continue the octreotide injection every time. Mm. So, what are the drugs which can give, which can reduce the portal pressure? Uh, Beta blockers uh, like Carvedilol or uh, propranolol, they can be given to reduce the portal pressure. Mm. Uh, in, uh, continuously, it can be given. Like if you are giving propranolol, 80 milligram BD can be given, or you can continue carbidilol 6.125 or 12.25 BD can be given. Okay. So that is uh, to prevent reduce the portal, portal pressure. pressure. This patient should not develop constipation. Mm. Why? So uh, constipation further worsens the hepatic. Hepatic and so better to avoid constipation. You give lactulose. lactulose. It's a non-absorbable sugar that produces diarrhea that should be given okay mm -hmm. what else we rifaximin can should be given antibiotic rifaximin should be given only if you are suspecting an infection because whenever patient is having infection you give rifaximin mm -hmm. like admitted patient in a, inside hospital you give rifaximin otherwise the rifaximin will not be benefited okay then mm -hmm. so you deliver uh, acid okay so deoxycholic acid and all should not be advised Unless until you have a uh, major like uh, liver disease. Okay. <laughs> this patient may, may not require all these things. This patient, what patient is required mostly is pandaprasol, beta blockers, mm. prevent hepatic encephalopathy. That type of treatment is enough. Okay. okay. Can you give iron tablet for this patient? Yes, sir, for bleed. Oh. Because the patient had bleeding and would be in problem. Because anemia. the patient is having bleeding and GI problem, better to avoid iron tablets. If you want to correct the iron loss, you better give IV iron, oh, okay. okay, because iron itself can produce more damage to the stomach. Mm. So, if there is a uh, acute bleeding or if there is, there is an ongoing problem, better to av avoid iron tablets. You can okay. give iron injection. Once the patient's GI problems are settled, then you can continue oral tablets. Okay. It can produce constipation, it can produce irritation, it can produce most, more gas formation, okay. gastritis is more with iron tablets. So, better to avoid all these things, mm. okay. Diet, what diet do you advise? Soft diet. Normal diet can be given if the patient is having a chance of hepatic encephalopathy, reduce the protein, protein. content in the diet. Mm. Okay. Animal protein should be avoided. Mm. Plant protein can be continued. Okay. Okay? Mm. Thank you.